Another half-life problem. So in this one, we are told that the half-life of radium is 1,590 years. And if 10 grams is present now, how much is gonna be present in 50 years? So whenever you get going on these, notice the big keyword here, half-life, that's pointing us towards the A equals P times E raised the RT formula, the continuously compounded interest formula. Um, but things are getting smaller over time because this is half-life. So eventually after we find our rate, which is not given to us on this one, our rate would be a negative value. All right, but let's start with the half-life information. You always wanna begin with the half-life information. Let's pick out some of the key numbers that are given to us. The half-life of radium is 1,590 years. So what that means is it's gonna take 1,590 years for whatever you start with to only have half of that remaining. If 10 grams is present now, okay, that's looking like what we started with, how much will be present in 50 years? Okay, so the 50 years, that's like a follow-up question. That's important to notice on this. We wanna always start with the half-life information. So we know we start with 15 grams is present now. So that's gonna be P, the starting amount. We are told the half-life is 1,590 years. So that's a time frame. 1,590 is gonna go here for our time frame. Now it feels like we have one too many unknowns, right? Our rate and our accumulated amount, which is almost true except half-life. Half-life means that if you start with 10 grams and you wait 1,590 years for radium, after that amount of time has elapsed, we're only gonna have half of whatever we started with remaining. So if you started with 10 grams, you end up with five grams. After 1,590 years, our time frame has elapsed. So we don't know our rate from the beginning on this. So let's plug in this information and try to solve for our rate, our one unknown. So we can go ahead and say this is five equals 10 E raised to the R times 1590 as we fill in. And now we want to solve for R. R is up in the exponent, so that makes this an exponential equation. Now in solving this down, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 10, isolate the exponential part, and you'll notice we have one half equals E raised to the R times 1590. To get R out of the exponent, the easiest way on this one is going to be apply a natural log because we have E as being the base. So let's apply a natural log to both sides. And we choose natural log because E is that base. And so that we get this nice canceling out. Natural log means log base E. And then we have E to a power. So whenever we line up and compose together a logarithm and an exponential function, which are inverses and they have the exact same base, you're gonna get very nice canceling out that over on the right hand side, we're really just gonna be left with the exponent. The inverse function property allows us to do that. Then to finish this up and get R all by itself, we'll divide both sides by 1590. That'll put R on one side all by itself. And I know it's tempting to get a decimal approximation. If we did put this into our calculator, we would get a negative number. But for our purposes, we kind of like exact answers as much as possible. So try to avoid getting a decimal approximation for this. Instead, to answer a follow-up question, let's use that for our rate. So natural log of 1 half divided by 1590. I'm going to fill in for my rate. And then let's see what else can we fill in here. 10 grams is present now. How much will be present in 50 years? Okay, so the follow-up question involves this 50 years, so that's a time frame. And we know how much we start with here, the 10. And it is worth pointing out, we've already util utilized this half-life information, so you would not want to include this five or the 1590. It served its purpose, right? They start you with half-life information that lets you find the rate. After you find the rate, plug it in, answer the follow-up question. So we don't know what A is but we could fill into our formula and go ahead and say, well, we know we want to find A of 50 is equal to 10 E raised to the natural log of one half divided by 1590 times 50 up in the exponent. So again, if you want to put a big set of parentheses around this entire exponent, some students find that helpful. 
as far as uh, getting it input into the calculator as correctly as possible. So on this, I got this to be about 9.784, and I guess our units are in grams because we knew it was 10 grams that we started with. These units stay consistent throughout the problem. All right, hope this helps out on half-life and trying to compute um, some half-life uh, information, put it all together into a modeling problem and uh, hope it all makes sense. Good luck.